Turning now to Bank of America shares, they have fallen by more than half this year, and it's facing the threat of multi-billion dollar lawsuits. But our next guest says it's a better bet right now than Apple. Rob Arnott is founder and chairman of Research Affiliates, which oversees more than $78 billion in assets. His flagship index fund, by the way, is beating out Vanguard even after Vanguard's founder called Arnott's methodology witchcraft. Well, Bob, let's start with your trade there. I, I hope you find that label amusing. I certainly do. And given your performance, uh, certainly something to laugh at. But let's talk about your latest recommendation. We picked it up about a week ago. You were saying you'd short Apple and actually buy B of A. It turns out over the last week that trades worked pretty well. I think the spread difference now is a little bit more than four and a half percent, meaning that B of A has outperformed Apple in the last week. Is that a trade that you actually put on or is it just more reflective of your general investment strategy right now? It's more reflective of our general investment strategy. Uh, we have put it on, but we've put it on in a very small way in some of our long short strategies. We use it as an illustrative example of the fact that a great company is not the same thing as a great stock, and a company that's struggling and facing deep, deep problems is not the same as a bad stock. If it's already fully in the price, or even more than fully in the price, you might find the bargains in the out of favor and the unloved. Well, there seem to be quite a few out of favor uh, stocks, bonds, pretty much wherever you look around the world. Is, are there any particular areas where you see a great deal of value? And, you know, I'll point to Europe first. Well, Europe, I think, is demonstrably cheaper than the U.S. in terms of the stock market. Uh, I'd much rather be invested in European stocks than U.S. stocks, but I'd much rather be invested in emerging market stocks than either. Uh, the emerging market economies are where we're going to see the major growth in the coming decade, and their valuation multiples are right between U.S. and Europe, but the prospects are much better than either. Is there a particular market that you're looking at? I mean, it, when we talk about a global slowdown, who is more levered to that than the emerging markets? Are you, are you avoiding sort of export-driven economies? Are you looking for emerging markets that have strong domestic demand? Really, it's more of a broadly diversified focus across the whole sweep of emerging markets. The reason for that is very, very simple, and that is that the emerging economies broadly don't face what we term the 3D hurricane that the U.S., Western Europe, and Japan face, the hurricane driven by deficit debt and demographics. For most emerging economies, their budgets are reasonably close to being in balance. Their... Uh, uh, their debt levels are manageable. In fact, they're so manageable that consider that the G5 is 40% of world GDP and consider that uh, emerging economies are 40% of world GDP. Okay, who has more debt? The G5 has 70% of world debt. Emerging economies have 10. They have seven times the debt coverage ratios of the G5, and they, yet they yield 3.5% more. I think that the weakness that we've seen in emerging markets, stocks and bonds, represents a really interesting buying opportunity, a time to ramp up if you don't already have some. And when we talk about debt or you say that there's value in bonds, is there a particular type of bond that you look at? Are you looking at the corporate debt? Is that the way your methodology works? Do you look at sort of the credit quality of specific companies or do you go in at the sovereign level? For the emerging economies, uh, what I find most interesting right now is emerging uh, economy sovereign debt denominated in the local currency. They carry a yield spread over the G5 that's considerable, and yet their debt coverage ratios are much better than ours. Uh, the developed economies of the world have a, an addiction to debt-financed consumption, and so are awash in debt. We're facing a Greek-style crisis across most of the developed world, uh, and yet the markets are acting as if it's not that big an issue yet. Uh, okay, well, I'd rather go where the debt coverage ratios are higher and the yields are higher, and I'd rather view sell-offs like we've seen in the last couple of months as a buying opportunity there more than as a buying opportunity for U.S. stocks. And Bob, I got to ask you one last quick question here. When we see a rally like the one we saw yesterday, um, do you think that's purely headline driven or are people coming in and maybe taking advantage of some uh, discount opportunities? 
Well, it would be a bit of both. Um, the markets are driven by shifts in expectations. People are really hoping and craving for a solution to the Greek situation. Uh, the scenarios are good, bad, and ugly. The good long-term answer is full-on Greek default, no new loans to the country, imposed balanced budget forced on them, which would ring fence the Greek contagion by uh, the Greek situation by discouraging other peripheral countries from going down the same path. The pain would be too great. Um, I characterize that as the mildly bad scenario. Then you ring fence the banks to limit contagion effect across the banking community. The bad scenario is Greek default with new loans made so that the moral hazard of uh, lending to those who can't and won't pay back the debt uh, remains just as serious as it is now. And the really ugly scenario is keep bailing them out, don't let them default by lending them money not only to spend more but also to pay interest on past loans. That's the ugly scenario and that would be in the long run very devastating. So the recent rally was partly a function of headlines suggesting that one All of right. these solutions might happen. All right, Rob. Unfortunately, we've got to end it on the really ugly scenario uh -oh. there. <laughs> I know that's okay, though. Do appreciate you putting that outline together for us. And thank you so much for coming on once again here on Fast Forward. That was Rob Arnott, founder and chairman of Research Affiliates.